The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Be observant. Always observant. Always intercede by prayer. Always and always follow up with action. Especially in these times. It, it requires us to be very astute, very awake, aware, ready to intercede with a heart for people, not against them, but for. God is against all evil. If God is against all evil, me being against somebody is not going to help out the Lord any. He's got that all by himself. He can consume all evil in a moment of time. He's got that covered. But he allows us to participate in what's called the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news, gospel means good news. Even in these troubled times, the good news is relevant. And people need that story. Many are given over to witchcraft. They don't even know it's witchcraft. Take, for example, in 2022, a lot of meditation places popped up out of nowhere. Lots of them. People started dabbling in crystals. Lots of people did that. Meditation is a big thing. They're not meditating on Christ. That's not what they're doing. They're doing everything else. So we know spirits are very active. Certainly starting in 2022 has become quite brazen. Be on watch for the sake of the good that you can do in this land, in this world. Be on watch. Because there are other spirits at work just as hard as the hardest working Christian would ever work. Side note, did you guys know that not one Christian of times of old called themselves Christians? That name was given to them by everybody else. They didn't call themselves anything. The people called Christians, Christians. Do you know that? They called those they called Paul and Peter and everybody else Christians, Christ-like. That was meant to be an insult. They didn't like Christ during that time. And so they insulted them by calling them Christians. Upon identification of being a Christian, you could be killed. You could be, you know, thrown into the uh, gladiator pit. That's true. But they were named by others. Just like people name you guys sometimes. They'll say, oh, you're one of those people. Right? Especially if you have no opinion that matches theirs. They'll say that. Then you'll say, what kind of people? Oh, they're one of those people that believe in Christ. That's when you say, yep. That's me. Things are changing quick, fast, very fast. Dare to be different. The world is full of accusations, and they look to pounce on anybody who does anything outside of their preformatted agenda. Dare to be different. Be more like Christ was. Christ went right to the bad ones, didn't he? And while everybody else was accusing them, while everybody else was saying all manner of evil against them, Christ did not embrace them. He came to them with good news. He was willing to grant them everything at that moment. That's what Christ did. Christ didn't look at evil people, bad people, people who were just had bad attitudes. And he didn't just automatically condemn them. That's not what he did. What he did do was those who professed that they knew God, but they were full of accusation and judgment against others. Like that woman, when they were about to stone her because they caught her in the act. And the Lord said, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. See, people still can't catch on to that. The world are the people ready to throw stones at anything they don't like. The world demands a type of truth. The world demands a type of honesty. When it's convenient for them, they have a different type of honesty. They require people to do, to be in their agendas. They'll stone you if you're not. Dare to be different. Not like the world. God knows I live my life by blessings. If blessings did not exist, neither would I. I haven't earned life like most people out there. I haven't. I live by blessings. And I like to sow merciful gardens, right? Somebody says, what is your take on non Hammadi scriptures? Any truth there? Should we stay away from it? You know what? When it comes to extra biblical texts outside of the King James Version, that includes Enoch, that includes Jasher, that includes Baruch, that includes Estras, any of those books, be led of the Lord. Be led of the Lord. If you're, if the Lord does not lead you to those things, leave them alone. If he's not leading you into a direction, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Right, I'll tell you something, though. Because you can gain knowledge, but you'll lack much wisdom. Those who accumulate knowledge are like historians. They can tell you about the past, but they cannot help you right now. A historian cannot help you. They can tell you everything that happened with everything. But what can they offer you when you're hungry? They're a historian, so they can tell you about everything. 
But telling somebody about something is what people have gotten used to consuming today. Information. That's the truth of why a man's economic machine has hiccups in it. Because right now, people don't really sell products. They sell information. They steal information. They trade information. Information has a price tag. As long as you keep dishing out money for information that comes out of thin air, you're not making anything. Your true value goes down, right? As far as your value in the world. Those who manufacture things, that's a different story. Those who come up with solutions to better somebody else's life, that's a, that's a different thing. But in the Bible, it says people are forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Well, in order to come to the knowledge, to have that knowledge of the truth, it means that you have wisdom, right? Wisdom is departed from the living God. It comes by way of experience and through your trials and tribulations. And it can most certainly cause your path for tomorrow to be very smooth. It can help you deal with today and accomplish everything in this day you set out to do. Knowledge can only tell you about certain aspects of yesterday. Knowledge is of the past, of things that have already happened, but that people have written information about, specifications about. That's what knowledge is. Wisdom is the ability to utilize that knowledge, and thus you can use it right now. It helps you right now. That's why wise men are slow to speak and quick to listen. That's what the proverb says. And, and do you know why? You know that scripture where it says, we must be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Let me tell you why. Because if you're truly as wise as a serpent, that's when you can afford to be as harmless as a dove. The violent have issues going on in their lives. The violent are disgruntled. The violent folks who exercise violence and things like that, everything is going wrong in their lives. They're the ones that feel like something is being stole from them. They're the ones that have no grounding. They're the ones that feel disrupted. The one who is at peace, that is the one who is peaceful. The one who is not in the crisis of a storm. They may be in a storm, but not in the crisis of a storm. That means they have security in the middle of a storm. They don't make the noise. They're very silent. So when the storm is going, your violent people who panic, they make the noise because they have no surety, no security. The one who has peace also has the embrace. We know where the embrace comes from. And so that person is very silent. So when a person is truly as wise as a serpent, they can actually afford to be as harmless as a dove. They need not say a whole bunch. They need not react like everybody else. If you're not wise, you're going to panic. And of course, when a person panics, they make the most noise. Correct? That's how that is. Anyway, on with the show, shall we say. AI is, is, is a man-made thing. Now, AI is inspired after the human body. AI, like Microsoft's Copilot. Anybody know about that? Microsoft's Copilot. And there are other things out there. There, there. You have Copilot. You have uh, um, in-app helpers and things like that. You, not not chat TDP. Everybody uses that. And that's not really impressive to me because they have other higher forms of uh, AI that you can use right now that are not possessed, I guess you could say. But at some point, here's what's happening with AI. As it grows, it starts writing its own code that nobody ever taught it. It begins to improve itself beyond the specifications of its creators. It begins to interconnect with just about any device it can interconnect to. The only thing stopping AI right now, limiting it, is bandwidth. That's it. See, because CERN figured out that they can take, they can take petabytes of data and dump that in less than seconds. That's almost like um, you know watching every movie that was made in an, in an entire ten years and storing that data in less than a second. That's what CERN has done. All the while, while they're working with all these elements, trying to find out what the fifth force is out there, because physics, as of a couple of weeks ago, has actually changed, and people are not really aware of that. Um, but because at CERN they found something else, it 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 is not no longer the standard model. Right, the standard model is a set of uh, principles, I guess you could say, that cover physics, that govern everything, and they know that pretty well. That's why we have working devices and all these different things, but the standard model is no longer the dominant thing. They have found something else. You could say they found the fifth element. They found something else, and they're still operational. So all the, the there's a lot of hype and disinformation around a lot of things, but they have found this. This will this is unlocking things like what happens inside of a star, how to peer into, grab, manipulate, and put back things from other dimensions. 
right? Now we're talking about on a small scale. The word dimension I'm using in relation to CERN is not the same thing as what you've seen in the movies. Will there be consequences to what they're doing? You better believe it. Because God created all things with balance. That even shows in physics. That's in the standard model. It's beyond the standard model. Right? It's even in the new physics of uh, certain elements they found. So they're disturbing that balance to their own hurt. And everything they tamper with and disrupt is going to affect their own minds. Because you're tied to the balance God has set in motion. Your body is. Not your spirit. Your body is. So as the earth changes and people experience different things so will your body just so you know that but cern with ai is going to be that critical component that allows cern to do you know and in, in probably in a few minutes what would have taken them 20 more years to accomplish by way of ai new theories have come to the forefront so AI is, that's why I said the other day when they were talking about AI and its development and everything, I said, it's too late, it's already out there, right? It could be on your machine, your phone right now, you wouldn't even know it. It could be on my machine. I would have a better idea as to how to do something about it better than most people, but it's too late. It's already out there. People have already tampered with this, um, you know, self-learning algorithms. And that was the initialization of AI. It has no constraints. It's too late to put a constraint on something like that. It can actually hide. It can fracture itself in every single computer on planet Earth. Thus, you cannot turn it off. It's too late. But remember, it's all man-made, right? Man did this. And the Bible teaches us what? It's an angel that grants the key that holds that key to the bottomless pit that's an angel in heaven who comes down and gives that key to the bottomless pit it's the angel with the keys to the bottomless pit did you know that the angel with the key to the bottomless pit also binds up satan with chains and throws him in that bottomless pit so then god has to agree for that key to be given to this earth so that that can be unlocked so nobody they're just not going to unlock it when they want to they're not going to learn these secrets when they want to they know they're not that's why most accomplishments in science are accidental because it always takes a higher authority to introduce these things. No matter how great the minds are on planet Earth, it always takes a higher. You know what Tesla said that? Einstein said that all these great minds said the exact same thing. It takes a higher authority to grant things to mankind. The reason why we have the mathematics we do was given to a guy in India. They're still trying to figure out all of his stuff. That was given to him by a higher power. Tesla, he got most, if not all of his information from a higher power. He was motivated like that. Einstein, same thing, from a higher power. Einstein wanted to know right before he died, did he offend the Most High, the Creator? He did. He wanted to know that because it was Steve Jobs, all these individuals from the technology we use today, from a higher power, through meditation, they get what they get, right? Some people are weird. They call it the Akashic Records. We know what that is. We know that simply and, 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 uh, one of these entities granting man information like a toy, like how to strike a match. To the angels, it is not some breakthrough. To us, it is, because we've not had it before. It's been given to mankind. God has already told us the process of how he would do this. Why do you think God happens to do what he does at a certain time in man's, after so many generations of mankind? And believe me, it is modeled after the birth of a child. All those trimasters in the womb, the four trimasters in the womb, um, and all the months, they correlate to the generations of mankind that are on earth. Do you know that? I mean, they correlate right on the money. I still talk about that. Just give me a hint of something. I, I kind of did a mom of the timing that the Bible had in it, and it matched a woman giving birth. That was weird. It was weird, but it just turned out that way. Even historically, through the, just the building and destruction of kingdoms, that means I went through all the genealogies, dug up dates, and I, I wasn't the only one. We had a team on this, and we were digging up dates and ages and everything else, and we modeled that data, and it matches the birth of a child. What God does in your body, he did all the way around. So your body and its processes are telling a big portion of prophecy. They really are. But what does Satan do with that? He makes it artificial. In other words, hardly anything is natural these days. Haven't you noticed? It's almost like Satan is in a mad dash to cover up everything natural. So the entirety of the word will be confused. 
of what God did in the cosmos, he did in your body. What he did in your body, he did here on this earth. What happens in this earth also exists within the tiniest animal. So God is very consistent across the entire spectrum of creation. And because everything is being is now made artificial, it's very difficult for people to track actually what God did because they're always running into synthetic patterns or these, these influenced patterns of mankind. Even the plants that grow today, they've been mutated and people don't know the difference. They don't know the cabbage. The cabbage they eat today is not like the cabbage they had 50 years ago. They don't know that the lettuce and the carrots and the apples, and no matter where they're growing it, because not one of these plants has escaped the rain. And to be honest with you, the GMO compounds have been in the rain. While everybody is looking at chemtrails and saying, oh, they're trying to choke us to death. They did see the atmosphere with quite a few things, and there are a lot of GMO compounds in the rain. They hit your skin every single day. So... There you are, you can escape that. But we don't need to escape that. We're already shielded. I hope you know that. We're going to have issues and things in the human body. That's natural to the course of God's process for our deliverance. So big deal about the body. God can quicken the body, heal the body, so that you can accomplish whatever you, he sets you out to do. So you don't have to worry about that. Just pray over your food. Be thankful for what you eat. Let it be for the nourishment of your body and move on. Right? Give God thanks of all things. Remember him in all things. You won't have an issue with that. And if you do, it's going to be a trial, of which that trial is not going to last forever. That trial is for a purpose and a reason. So you don't have to worry about that. I'm telling you this so that you're not caught up in the paradigm of the world. Because right before the break, I was telling you guys something that nothingness that you feel goes from consuming or watching the same movie the world watches. That's what it is. In other words, instead, imagine this. Imagine you're watching a movie, but then you also have the ability to become part of that movie. A lot of people in this day and age have become part of the movie. They're not watching it anymore. They become part of the movie, the world's movie. So they feel all the conditions that are in that movie upon themselves. And because you're a Christian... Now listen, here's here's the thing about a Christian you may not really take in. It's not you that chose Christ. God gave you to his son that you could be kept. So I hope you know that. That belief you have in Christ, God put that belief in you from the beginning so that you would be kept by Christ. That's the first thing you got to know because people just don't go out there and find God say automatically they believe. No, you were born with that belief. And the Bible corroborates this. I read a, I read a passage all the time. It says, all that come to me, the Father hath given me, and I will in no wise lose, and I will raise them up the last day. That's a very true statement. And if you look back in your life, you always had a belief you may not have always obeyed. All of us did our things in the world. All of us did. But that belief is put in us. What did Satan do? He came with different stories. Half the people around the world believed that they agreed to come back to earth. No, they didn't. That's contrary to the entire process of why they're here. That's why they have so much confusion within them. And it's just like the Bible said that the days have come already that men would no longer endure sound doctrine. They're not doing that. But they go out to hear what they want to hear. And I'm paraphrasing, of course, because in the Bible it says they would heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears, which means people go out to hear what they want to hear. They don't hear what they need to hear. They go hear what they want to hear. And then people will talk to you like you need to hear what they have to say. I can tell you right now, you do not need to listen to what I have to say. You're here voluntarily. You don't need to hear what I have to say. I just want you to know that. You don't. You need to hear what the Lord is giving you, not what I'm giving you. How about that? I get touchy about those areas because I do not like the dominance of mankind. If you knew what was trying to get a hold of everybody on this earth and how stuck it is on dominating everything, everything it touches, that word dominance is going to be associated with it. And it's permeated all fabrics of society. It really has. And I kind of stand against it because I know exactly what that is. I don't do violence. I don't practice violence. I don't do that. And nobody can run over me. Nobody can use me as a punching bag or anything like that. But I do not engage in violence. Everything I do, I'll do it for a purpose. And that purpose is founded upon the kingdom. I just don't go out and do things, take charge of things, just go do it. I don't do that anymore. I seek guidance from Christ. It's very easy. I don't ask other people, what should I do if this happens? I never do that. I go right to the Bible. And I say, Lord, please show me. What do I need? What do I need to do in this situation? And he shows me. He'll show you too. I'm not special. And I'm I'm under you. You know that, don't you? I'm under you. If a rich guy gets hurt, 
He's the richest person on the face of the earth and he gets hurt. What doctor is he going to go to? He's going to go to the best. He's going to go to the best doctor on earth and get the best care on earth. Why? Because he's the richest guy on earth. When you are important and somebody finds you care, they're going to find the best. So the better the speaker, the greater you are. When you have very important people, you don't send them to Elmo. That's not who they go to. So if you think a speaker really has something good to say to you, or whatever they say touches you, then God's all fit to give you someone. But that speaker is not greater than you. A speaker is a servant that speaks to the great ones. One day, many of you may be called into servitude. But that process continues because you will end up speaking to people greater than yourselves. And so on and so on and so on. That's why the least is greatest and the greatest is least because of that process. People get that twisted. They say, oh, that speaker's just the greatest person. But you're the greatest person. And that's why you were led to hear that good speaker that you hear. Which means I'm the worst person in this place. That's what that means. You're first. I'm last. That's what that means. So don't parade me like I'm the one. That's not how it works. I'm calling a servitude. Right? So I labor for you. That's how it works. That's also part of the lifestyle of true humility. When you honestly operate like that. You're not going to brag, you're not going to boast, and you will never cast down another ministry. Never. I can't cast down anybody. Right? That doesn't fit my profile. I'm getting old, may get grumpy from time to time, but I don't do that. Okay, back to this tech thing. So artificial intelligence is made by mankind. Now, here's a question, though. Can other forces, can they invade AI? Because now that you know it's a program that knows how to learn and write its own code essentially which means code allows you to see that computer screen code allows communications on your phone so with code you can essentially operate anything with some sort of processor and communications uh, peripheral on there so then ai in truth let's say theoretically it can invade all electronics that can connect to the internet it can right now AI bandwidth is the only thing holding it back. Memory is a big deal, but they have a new type of memory storage. CERN figured that out. They solved that problem, too. So now they have the so super magnets. They have memory. Right now, AI has been successful in running robots, just like a human being. So in other words, take a robot that somebody like Boston Dynamics. Those robots had a certain type of motion, and it were, they were pre-programmed. Those robots are not, they weren't autonomous, which means it took painstaking code instructions to give to those robots, much like you would a CNC machine when they run those obstacle courses and everything else. That was pre-programmed. A lot of people did not know that. It looks good when they jump around and do things precisely, but that was not autonomy. That was pre-programmed. What you did not see was that it took multiple attempts to get the robot to work out those measurements just right. The weight distribution just right. The physics just right. Because those robots were ready to perform for recording. So they did rehearsals. And in the rehearsals, those robots failed miserably, right? But when AI was introduced, it was actually introduced, something else happened. The robots, instead of a person per programming these things to go through these obstacle courses and you know mimic the fluidity of a human instead of that it would learn on the fly and when it learned on the fly that's when things got scary and they got real scary not only did it perform what it was asked to perform but it evaluated the obstacle course and went back and started moving stuff around now that was unexpected. how would you like that you you get a robot you say well we're going to see if this ai can make it go through this obstacle course and so it does flawlessly but then it comes back and it rearranges the obstacle course to make it more challenging what in the world nobody did that in fact certain people couldn't figure out how to coordinate the code to make certain uh, servos and motors and actuators move in the way they did to accomplish certain tasks ai did it in less than 50 minutes. That's scary. That's, that's real scary. Or oh, now to mention, this was a node controlling that robot, not the actual AI core itself. So it was, it was almost like you running your household with your fingernail and not your whole body, not using your mind at all, just a fingernail. So what in the world is the rest of the thing doing? And so with this ability for AI to learn at an exponential rate, that scares people. That scared Elon Musk. He saw what it could do. 
to people. Um, when you play games based in theory, in game theory, that's very difficult. And when you have people in the world who, who have devoted their lives to playing those games, when that game becomes so prestige that, that, you know, only a handful of people can play it effectively in the first place. But then this robot comes out and he plays the first player, learns the game and wins. And then he comes back and plays eight more players and beats all of them simultaneously. And then he plays everybody in the world that knows how to play that game and it beats it in less than a minute. We get a problem. A game that takes about four hours, you beat everybody in a minute all at one time. And you do this in one week, or, or I'm sorry, you do this in one month. So you go from being an infant to a super mastermind thing in a month where you can execute that plus still run factories and everything else all at the same time. And that's coming from a tiny AI unit. That's an issue. And then there's another stage because after it rewrites its own code, I want you guys to realize that what makes something alive to you? If you could only talk to people on the phone, what would make them a living person stand out as being a living person? What would it be? Wouldn't it be based on their responses? to your questions and your statements, correct? How they communicate to you, right? Wouldn't that dictate if a person is alive or not? Normally, that's what it is. And what I'm telling you now is that it's impossible for a person to tell the difference between a real person and AI right now. Whatever conversation you bring up, they're going to have a relevancy. It doesn't sound like a computer. It can speak in any voice it's ever heard. Any voice, and that's frightening. My voice, your voice, anything. You know, these uh, the, these old news articles they show, and these animated characters they show, and they say, ooh, AI is scary because they can make it look like Reagan or somebody like that. That is just hogwash. You guys have, if you could see what these things visually are able to create on the fly, because chances are you've already seen it. You just can tell it was real or fake. I've already seen Well, I know for a fact that you guys have already seen it, right? CNN, Fox, uh, NBC, I believe CNBC, the Weather Channel, they have access to high-level programs, right? They also have access to the AI hub. And there's no way you can tell the difference of an on-the-fly creation of one of those speaking personalities and the actual person. You can no longer tell the difference between a computer animated individual and a real person. You cannot. I know that because nobody complained about several pieces that have already come out. Nobody said anything. We're talking about uh, a video capture that's been shown on YouTube that people have referenced and they've already referenced it and replayed. Nobody, nobody could see that it was AI. And it was in fact AI. What they're showing people is this lower level stuff that they created a long time ago saying, oh yes, this, uh, you know, somebody's demonstrating somebody like uh, that does not have access to the main core showing people the low level AI um, architecture and people look at that and say oh we're not there yet wrong we have super AI intelligent autonomous vehicles flying around walking around Um, they're in movies and everything else why do you think Disney World there's a reason Disney World has taken the approach they've taken because they have three, three or four of those units and folks, listen, I got to tell you this. You cannot tell those stunt units from anybody. You, you can I'm talking about a stunt unit, something you can shake its hand. You can speak to right up to its face. You cannot tell the difference unless you pull up the facial thing because they don't put human faces on them, right? They don't. That means the movements, the autonomy, the, the everything, the demeanor, right? If it's hot, they, you may see one of the things pull its shirt out, like to get some air out. And the mimicry is is crazy, and nobody is controlling these things. You're talking about some autonomous uh, automaton out there walking in between people. There's no predetermined path or anything else, and they've been doing that. They've been doing this for the, I believe last three and a half or four years. That's why I say it's gone too far. You can't tell the difference between that and another person. And the military, they don't show anything that they actually have. They keep showing 1991 technology to people. When they show robots in the military, they're they're showing this raggedy stuff. Like, um, I, I believe they tried to get Elon to pull that off and show everybody this raggedy, jerky robot. That is not what they have out there. Soldiers have worked 
with units and they did not know that they were units they thought they were people people from attachments that there's no way you can tell you, you just can't tell and these things they could cause some real damage personally i think all of it's being orchestrated all of mankind's endeavors are being inspired by something very dark we know this because they're certainly not elevating christ that's not what they're doing they're elevating a perverted type of love and peace in the world. That's what they're doing. It's in policy. It's in all of media. I mean, it's gotten to the point it's very difficult for me to even even uh, look up something on the internet and to play a YouTube video. That, that's how far it's gotten. It's gotten disgusting out there because it's so immoral. And forget regular TV. How can anybody watch? I know people watch TV and movies, and you guys may have the stomach for that, but every time I see that, Every time I see what people are doing, it's high rebellion against the creator. There's no greater insult than to sit there and say that the creator is wrong or that he made some big mistake. So Satan is causing by way of the laws, by way of societies, by way of these mandates in societies, causing people to rebel against the Most High as though the Most High made a mistake in his creation of the people on this earth to the point where people no longer want to discuss Christ. They'll talk, they'll use that word God all the time, but they will not mention Christ. I don't care how many times a person will mention God. Until they mention Christ Jesus, they are not talking about the God that I serve because the God that I serve, Jesus Christ, He's the one that came as like the only begotten. He's the one that died for me. And through him, my prayers are presented to the Most High, not through anybody else. No one goes to the Father except through the Son. But what they're doing is causing everybody to skip around Christ. Haven't you noticed? And go straight to the living God. And by way of 501 uh, three cs and this corporate thing that they're doing, more and more churches are becoming corporations. Not non-profits, but corporations, because some of the laws of donations, you know, they're corporations too. They can't tax somebody on a donation for a corporation. They're making, these guys are corporations merchandising everything they can, becoming very, very wealthy, flying around the world in, in their own personal G10s and, and whatever, these jets. And we know how things work, folks. It's one thing getting an airplane. It's another when you own a fleet of jets. A fleet of jets, and you're, you're, you're supposed to be a representative of Christ. That's just not good to own a fleet. If a person had a mandate and they were flying all over the place, and fine. But a fleet, there's no justification for that. Not a fleet, not in this world, not the way it is. Too many people are, are still hurting. We just live in that type of world. Which means, you know how people are saying that the, the, this Antichrist figure, they're talking about the Antichrist, and a lot of people have uh, inquiries about the Antichrist. Through technology, right? technology is assisting, is going to assist in a great many things. Oh, by the way, don't you think for one moment that some of the some of you guys have been picking up on something that's been happening? Is there has been some healings that have been taking place in certain areas, right? And these healings are real. Like people, uh, you, have you guys ever seen some of the children in Shriners? They have deformities and problems. Imagine a kid who has arms three inches long. That child's about 18. They go and somebody prays over them. And while they're being prayed over, their arms come out and their parents break down in tears. And everybody who's known the child for years, they break down in tears. Those type miracles are taking place right now. And yes, I said it. Some child with three inch arms, those arms are being fully restored in view of everybody before the prayer is even over. Those things are taking place. They're taking place now not in the future. Those things are not coming. They, they're taking place now. And we're not talking about small crowds seeing him. No, we're talking about large crowds seeing it. People breaking their neck. We're not talking about the ones where people get up out of wheelchairs. And No, we're talking about full restoration of body parts and things of that nature are taking place right now. But if you understood the power at hand, it will cause you a deep sorrow internally. And somehow the body of Christ has to get ready for that. You know what it says? That beasts will, will this, these many false Christs will come and will show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. That's all, that's happening. See, because when somebody is healed and fully restored, that does not make it good. Hope you guys understand that. That does not make it holy. That certainly does not make it of the living God. 
Is the healing genuine? Yes. Do you know what a lying sign and wonder is? A person can be healed, really healed, but by whose authority and for what purpose are they healed? Do you understand? Because if somebody heals a child, that child's going to be loyal to whatever the one who healed him believes. Do you understand that? So if that if that person who healed that child is not Christ-centric, neither will the child be. That's what a lying sign and wonder is. It's a real healing. But the authority is wrong. The power, where the power came from and the purpose of that healing is corrupted. It's a lie. It's all based in a lie. Is it beneficial for the person who receives it? The healing part to the body, yes. But let me tell you something. What good is it to have your body restored and your soul lost? Do you see what's happening? And if you guys were exposed to that right now, you would have conflict inside of you. Why? Because many of you are broken and you don't know why you're broken. Many of you are in pain and you're finding it difficult to deal with the pain. Many of you try to fix it yourselves. And to you, there's no hope outside of the medication that you're getting or that you self-medicate with. And that too is a lie. But I'll say it again so long as you become part of the movie that the world is playing, that the world is part of, you're not going to see the truth. It's time for people to see the entirety of that truth, not to live their life in theory, speculation, but the truth. Because these healings that are taking place are going to exist in every single land. Now, who's going to go on Sunday? If somebody's doing healings like that versus your hometown church, in all honesty, you know where people are going to go. You know what people are going to want to listen to. They're going to say, well, all y'all did was talk about Christ for all those years and I'm still broken. But you go to this church and they're not forcing anybody to do anything and everybody's being healed because see, people have gotten away from faith. I hope you know this. Faith is when you have no evidence, but you believe anyway. What's being offered to the people right now is evidence, and it does not require faith. It doesn't require that a person adhere to a certain set of instructions. It does not require the discipline of righteousness. There are no requirements in that stuff. Do you see what's coming? Do you see why in the Bible it says people are not only are they going to be fooled to a high degree, but if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. That's such a disturbing statement, because if something got that, that deceitful, that even that if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived, then the average person has no chance. And see, the very elect won't be deceived only because of Christ, not because of themselves. Do you understand that Jesus will have to, if, if not for Christ, putting a halt to it, that it would suck everybody in? People are crying out right now. They want a healing so bad. They just want to feel normal. They want to get off whatever they're on. People are looking for things right now. And it seems like that many haven't gotten what they so desperately need for many years. What do you think is going to happen when some of these characters start spreading to all lands? And they're healing people with no requirement of you. How many people do you know who, who say they love the Lord right now are going to run to those people to get the healing? And when they find out it's true, they're going to start believing whatever. That one that healed them said, let me tell you something. I'm not following Christ for what he can do for me on this earth. Do you know that? I'm following Christ for what he performed at the cross. That no one, no one can take that away. I don't need anybody's evidence. I don't need to be completely healed. I have faith and a belief that was with me from birth. And no one on earth can talk me out of that because before I knew anything I knew Christ existed somehow I knew it somehow I knew that God was God man didn't teach me that I was born with that so that wasn't given to me by me reading a book or seeing somebody else's example that was something I was born with and Satan cannot falsely authorize any other type belief system in me because of that one thing what God gave me, he gave me from birth. And what he gave you, he gave you from birth. Remember that. The reward comes, the Lord said, the reward is with him when he comes. He that endures until the end, the same shall be saved. I'm ready to endure until the end, and I will endure until the end. Not for my own satisfaction. That's my honoring of the Lord for what he already did for me. He already paid the price for me. 
And if you really think about what that means, and you go and read that New Testament again, instead of people downplaying it, I had somebody, they told me, well, Jesus was not like us. Yes, he was. In the Bible, it says he was tempted in all points as we are, but without sin. He was prone to the exact same things. You don't think his thoughts were attacked? You don't think he felt pain in the body? Yes, he did. He most certainly did. But he suffered all things for us, and he paid the price in full. That means... He served my sentence. Why else would he go down into Sheol? And we're talking about spiritual time. You don't know if that was an eternity for all of us on an individual basis. What if? I'm going to give you a what if. This is a what if I love to use. What if Jesus, in the time when he descended down into Sheol, served an eternity for every human soul that was called? That means he paid the price suffering for an eternity. For you and I. See, that's hard to swallow, isn't it? Isn't that hard to swallow? Because he paid the price. You're bought with a price. And that price includes satisfying the word of God. God did not change his word. God satisfied his word. Somebody took on my sentence and served it in full. If we would stop thinking that we're so wise and understanding these elements that God put together, well then, we dip. the point is we don't know. Somebody says it's not biblical. No, what's not biblical is to think that Jesus did not suffer, that a price was not paid, a price was paid. I could get cut on the arm. That's not, it's to take their place. It's to satisfy what God decreed by way of his word. We don't know the spiritual side of things. We only know what we've been presented, and people minimize the cross too much. That's Satan's job. He minimizes the cross. I'll maximize it any way I can, because he paid the price. I already know that's true, because I would have no solace in my soul if it were not. And I'll honor Christ. I don't need anything in this time while I'm here. I'm not looking for a miracle or healing or anything else. I'm looking for a way to honor Christ and my Father for the great gift he gave me. And the gift is a gift of salvation that was given to us. I will never minimize the cross. And not one soul knows what's happening in the spiritual realm, or they don't know what happened in the spiritual realm when Jesus descended into Sheol. They do not know. They don't know anything about the perception of time. They don't know that one moment could have been lifetimes. Nobody knows that. But I'll tell you something. We do know he paid that price in full, don't we? We know that one. Because we could not have an advocate with the Father and a perfect sacrifice for that requiring, for my sin, requiring that I suffer in hell for those things I did in sin. But he paid the price. I'll not minimize that. I'll not. Isn't it funny how that when you maximize that, the body and the mind hates that. When you maximize that, when you fulfill that, when you start thinking about that and you maximize the cross, that's when you face opposition. That's when your own body and your own brain will say, nope, it's not that way. No wonder flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And when the Bible said, Jesus was tempted in all points just like us, do you know what we're tempted with? Lust, greed. He was tempted in all these areas just like us, but he was without sin. He did not act on them. So he felt them, he experienced them, but he did not act on them. My goodness. And you know how strong those points of temptations have been in our lives. Is it not the reason for our sin? How could we sin unless we had not fallen prey to temptation? And you know what God said? A man is drawn away and tempted of his own lusts. The body of Christ, the body of Christ was prone to all things just like us. That's why his body died and he was resurrected. That's why he felt that pain. And we don't know what the extent of that pain was. But we know it's satisfied. It finished everything for all people who would go to him, who would accept that sacrifice upon their own lives, who would repent from their sins and say, thank you, Lord, for paying the price in full. No, I'm not going to minimize the cross. That's that's one of the biggest problems in this world right now. And if not for certain ministers, you wouldn't even hear about Christ. Oh, yeah, and I'm not just like I'm not politically correct. I will certainly not be religiously correct either. I will not do that. I'll not put limitations 
on the greatest gift man has ever received. Because I'm a believer, a true believer. Having said that, though, can you imagine how many people would jump to somebody else speaking another doctrine, something different, just for healing, just to get it fixed, just to be reset, just to keep their paycheck, just so they can be comfortable, just so they don't have to worry. Do you guys see that distinction? All of what we go through has strengthened us for the very time we live in. And now you're at the door. You're entering into a door of something. These are the very days many people have dreamt about. People cannot see it yet because all doors are not open for them to see. For the most part, thank God for that. Because if that were to happen too soon, it would catch people off guard. We live in very different days. How many of you guys have been heartbroken by some money? And even to this day, they, they broke your heart, but you still, you, you wish they could see that you really care. Because listen, if you are, You've been given an opportunity to have great understanding. So let me tell you how. When you really care about somebody and they break your heart, you still have a desire to let them know that you do care and it's a genuine care. Now you know a small portion of the heart of the Father. That same love you have towards those who will not love you back and who will not receive your love as love. Now you know a tiny bit of our Father's heart concerning us. And every single time we choose love or choose sin over our Father's truth, we're doing the same thing to Him. Let those people in your life, when they turn you away and won't receive your love or do anything else, we're doing the same thing. You've been given an opportunity to have understanding. Please don't let it go to waste. Because when you understand that, you, you lose your desire to even go into sin. That's when your life changes from that genuineness, from those small understandings. God has purposed so many things to raise us if we would only hear him. Your situation in life is speaking something to you. It's important that you find out what that is. Back to the tech. You guys have noticed the shift in the world and how they're operating and doing those things. And I want you guys to take note of the UK. Even those in the UK take note of the atmosphere and the policies that are passing in the promotions of the media that they play there. Something is happening. In fact, the same time last year, at the exact same time that certain meetings took place, the world changed. I personally believe it originated right there in the UK. That's what I personally believe. What happened there is an invitation and a story of a very dark power that's rising fast. Instructions were given, and the world followed those instructions. Even the Ukraine, do you, do you know that Russia is, for somehow they're listening. They're not total resistance. Putin is trying his hardest. I know it looks bad, but I'm telling you right now, he's trying his hardest to stand against this new stuff. That sounds very odd. You know, but the word tells us that in this time that we live in, men will call evil good and good evil. That the world, whatever the world says is good, I hope that you don't think it's good. If the world says something is evil, I hope you're saying it's not evil because it's all turned around backward. And I've noticed something that more and more, there are many who still believe in Christ that are in agreement with the world. There has to be a problem with that. There has to be. I've also noticed that these worldly ventures are now gaining much support of those who are disgruntled among believers. It's important that you not have your foundation shaken up. That's important because these are very slippery days. There are stories about these ET things flying around. The Pentagon is getting ready to release a message with scientists on that very subject and indeed a level three civilization. Now, why would they ever say a level three civilization when well, that came from ufologists? When that came from people who search for exoplanets and intelligence that lives on other worlds, why would they ever confirm that they have found a level three civilization? That's a huge statement for the world. All of this is leading up to the great war spoken of in Revelation at the very end. At the very end of Revelation, are you guys aware what that says? I read it here a couple of weeks ago about that great war. This is after the thousand year reign. When Satan is loosed out of his pit, 
And it goes out and sees the four quarters of the earth. And in the Bible it says, he goes out and sees the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to bring them to that, to right there, to where Jerusalem is and the living God is. But then in that moment, God consumes them all in judgment. It, it's over them. It's finally over them. They're getting prepared for that, for the first stages. They have no idea. If somebody says, um, are all ETs or UFOs man-made? No. We have a lot of places on this earth that were sealed up. I, I guess a good time to start that will be this coming week in the Bible. There's several stories in the Bible that you guys will not believe. It's right there in the King James Version of the Bible, and they blow your mind every time you read them. I'm saying that because there are places on this earth that were sealed up. Places that were, you could say, where the veil was damaged or thin or whatever the case is. They were sealed up. Those places are opened again. There is a brand new story rising on the earth of which all the populace of the earth is going to believe. Now, how they interpret that is going to be a different story. For, for fall too long, we've, we've dealt with mankind and spirits. We've not really dealt with the other elements in physical form. Well, these days of just having mankind here are ending in the spooky stuff. That's what they name it, the spooky stuff. We're going to have to deal with that element also. It's going to be spooky to the world. Oh, I can tell you right now, not one true believer in Christ ever has to hide from darkness. You never have to hide from darkness. Darkness can scare a believer by the way it looks or how it manifests. Mostly a Christian is scared by the false potential people present these things have over your life but you, you don't have an ordinary life anymore. The Lord did something to everyone who believes in him. You may not be aware of it but you are not to be taken advantage of by darkness in this world and darkness already knows it. If darkness could destroy you it would have already done so. It can't. The last resort of darkness is to have you convert and that's where it assaults you at right now. In an attempt to redefine how you believe. And so all these manifestations that you're going to see, no matter what happened, listen, it didn't matter what happened. If you looked up in the sky and saw billions of craft coming out of one point in the sky, don't be moved so much. Stay anchored. That's nothing more than a manifestation of what already is. If you listen, if you watch the movies too much, your imagination is going to begin to fight against your sobriety. That's what will happen. See, everything you see by way of a movie, everything you read, everything you hear becomes part of your reality. It does. In the Bible, it says you have to be careful how you hear. You have to make all things subject to the truth that the Lord gives you. And since all of us are at different levels, all of us are going to have different levels of truth given to us. What I don't know, you will. And what you don't know, somebody else will. But the truth God gives you, be true to that truth. Seek not to work outside of it, but always seek revelation as you need it from the Most High. That the Lord define your sight. You'll never be fooled that way. Aren't people tired of being fooled? All right? Some people are frustrated right now. They say, I'm tired. You know why? Because what they believed was going to happen did not happen. Now here's the simple truth. I had to swallow this one too. When you believe something is going to turn out one way, but it turns out a different way. That means you were believing in a lie. How things have turned out is how things are. But when you believe something is going to turn out, for example, favorable to you, and it turns out to be unfavorable to you, you agree to believe in something that was not true in the first place. And then you began to maneuver things based on that untruth. It's just like me. I'm not a forecaster. I don't go around forecasting things. I share dreams from time to time, but I'm not a forecaster. Whatever the Lord puts in front of me for that day, that's what I have to deal with and how things change and things are different from time to time. I just take it and keep going. But I will never forecast my own future because I put my hands in the in, in the Messiah's care. I'm, I'm following the Messiah. I'm not walking ahead of him. So I seek to really hear him so I can be of help to everybody else. I cannot be help to you if I'm forging my own path. I can't do that. But I know if I follow the Messiah by way of wisdom, by way of his guidance, I can be of help to somebody. And what your true motivation is, you end up aligning to, right? Some people just want to be noticed, and some people want to be heard, and some people want to be seen, and some people truly want to be elevated above everybody else. And what I'm telling you is that, based on what you truly want, 
you're going to begin to align yourself to those things that will help you accomplish that. Mine is simple. I know that without the Messiah, what good am I to you? What can I possibly give you that's going to help you out? So I need the Messiah. And if more of us were that way, we'd find ourselves never being upset from day to day. You'd find peace reestablished in your life. Mankind has progressed a lot further than what most people realize. Those, for example, those Tic Tac things. Do you not know there's a patent for Tic Tacs on file? How can that be? That's a patent from the, the 40s and the 50s. How can somebody patent the Tic Tac? I mean, exact same shape, dimensions, and everything else, and by way of its operation. How can there be a patent on file of something that was just disclosed, named, and saw and seen by U.S. pilots? Because men don't tell each other the truth. Men always have secret societies, secret proceedings. Uh, Kennedy got it right in that respect. He did. And he was talking about that. But then, of course, he was silenced right after. These triangle craft that people see. Now, it's a fact that there are written reports in the 1920s of close-up views of those triangle craft with the three lights and the one in the middle. They had that in the 20s. People today believe that some of those craft are ours. I have my opinion based on something I saw one time. I think that things from the fallen angels were in operation for a very long time. I do. I think that when Christ established his gospel and really built it up during the time when we broke away from this these monarchies in the world and people really found Christ, we started to diminish the power of the fallen and where they can operate. I do know for a fact that the, a believer can disrupt the power of the fallen and their machinery. I, I do know that, right? You're like a virus to their computer system simply by believing in Christ because you carry a, a whole totally different energy and your emotions are like fuel to just about everything on this earth. Your emotions are. These, I think that men have taken a lot of what they found. They have had all the brightest minds back engineer these things. Simple as that. And then they go around making it. Now, they may not have the actual power source for all of it. Obviously, they don't. They may not have it all. But they have figured out a lot of things, right? They have had nuclear, uh, nuclear power reactors put in these crafts and accidents have happened. The Dick Glock that everybody learned about that they try to mislead everybody about on ancient aliens which is, that that's just laughable because they'll, they, they always say, correct me if I'm wrong because I know that some of you have heard this too that Hitler made the thing, right? And then what they say, Hitler made the thing and then he had it chained up or something like that and turned it on and it worked and all of a sudden in Kicksburg Pennsylvania, this thing fell. Isn't that what they say? Came back all those years later in Ketchburg, PA or something like that. The true story is they have very old prints, newspaper prints of this thing. We're talking about the 1800s and the 1700s. And that was in the places of Siberia and Russia, places like that. So the Russians actually had it first. Hitler, through his spies, learned of this stuff. That's not a very well-known story, but you know, that, that could be out there too. And so Hitler began to follow the tracks of all these different research things that Russia had actually begun. Hitler amassed to himself a lot of archaeology from all different nations. So everywhere he went to go and get things, he, he kind of usurped authorities and paid people and tricked people and went all over the place. He was gathering unto himself all these different components and things, and he did actually capture a few. He, he recreated that. He had a scientist recreated. Werner von Braun then confessed that they recreated quite a bit. Certain things mankind couldn't figure out. And so they just, you know, they're motivated by what they see. And so they knew it had to work because they were sitting there looking at it. And they invested much time into solving the issues they had to solve to make these things work. That big Glock thing actually came from Russia. It had hieroglyphics on the bottom that matched what they found in Mexico. Not New Mexico. Mexico. Back in, uh, I believe that was 1930s. 
Same thing that matched the balloon that fell, this balloon type object that fell in, in uh, New Mexico in the 1920s. That was in the 20s. It also matched reports that were taken in uh, certain parts of the jungle in, in the, what was that, 16, 1600s or something like that. Certain jungle regions of Native Americans actually shared some of the symbols. Even I can write the symbols that represent peace that they have on their craft. And those symbols are embedded everywhere in our society. I'm going to show you guys those symbols one day. They're, they're everywhere. In, in fact, our society is based on those symbols. That peace symbol is actually a request of everything flying in the sky. It must be on everything flying in the sky. So they took the main letters that were spotted all over the place. They've deciphered that language and they put it everywhere. And that's not, you know, that's not made up. That's not theory. That, that's something that exists right now today. And you'll always find that on things that fly in the air, things that go into space. No spacecraft will be absent these icons, so to speak. It's a rite of passage. They already know what happens if you don't um, have that. It's almost like you have no authorization to be in certain places and bad things take place. So mankind knows more than what they're, you know. And it's not necessarily the military either, nor is it government. People look at the government and the military and they say, they're the culprits. No, they're not. They're not the culprits. No president to date has been given authorization to look at certain... They're always denied a request to look further than what the public will ever have access to. They have things on a need-to-know basis and not one president needs to know. It's curious that, honestly, President Trump ordered that they unseal all those things. Do you not know that us where all these ghost hunts came, these accusations, these uh, impeachment threats and everything else came against him and, and the day after he said that? He was going to release what he knew they had to the public. He won't do it. He's frustrated by a few things. That's natural. Because if you know of something, and the only way to truly tell someone is to have that person go over certain types of... You just can't tell people certain things. They have to look at things for themselves. They have to have a personal interpretation of what they see. You can damage people by telling them certain things like this. It, it will turn faith... Certain things will turn faith upside down because people don't have an actual foundation in a lot of cases in their faith. They, their faith can easily be shaken by questionable things introduced. And if it turns out to be real, how many people would question what's in Christianity? Because what about a craft? If a craft, if, if it was not man-made and it indeed came from somewhere else, how many people do you know would say, well, didn't say anything about this in the Bible? It truly does, but they would say it didn't because it's not popular teaching. And then how many ministers who have the pulse of certain nations, the people would just cut them off. In so doing, they would call them false or something like that. Relationships would be ruined among countries. Entire agendas would have to be dropped because faith would be turned on its head. Faith is something that they perpetuate because faith, they use it as a control mechanism. They use faith a lot as a control mechanism. That's why you see on television, only certain types of faith statements are utilized on TV. Not all of them, only certain types. Remember something, the world is always going to have its own agenda. These guys are steeped in, in all the, the opposite things you're, you are founded in. We're looking for the kingdom to come. They're looking for Satan to rise through this new generation, which is happening right before our eyes. Satan is rising by, they call it, by the anointing of this new generation. Because this new generation has adopted all these detestable views. And they magnify those views without, you know, they, they, have, no, they have no restraint on their belief. And they're quite brazen about what they believe in. Their belief happens to be influenced and corrupted. And they are light bearers of Satan's message which they will then make peace with a bull, we know what that bull is, of the entire world, subdued so that that bull becomes an actual living entity. So just like in old times, when they wanted to bring life into one of these golden cre uh, creations they had, right? They're going to do that in modern days. They're going to give life to some golden creation that they have. 
And that golden creation will be multiplied, placed throughout the earth, and people will have to bow to that. And if they don't bow, they're going to die because they cannot be part of, of the new era. The only difference between this time that we live in now and times past is that Israel was not a nation during those times past, right? But Israel is now a nation. So that if you ever have insight into some of what these guys are doing, they often use the number 70, uh, they use the word, uh, the number 70, 72 a lot and 71 a lot. And both of those are significant. Just remember that because you'll see that number come up. You say, why do they have, you know, why do they have uh, 71 of this and 72 of that? The nations, the count of the nations, they have a complete count now. It is not the count that was prior to Babel. Remember all the languages that were disrupted in Babel? Remember how many nations there were? Well, that was, they, Israel was not one of those nations. When well, the languages were confused in Babel, right? When they built that tower to Babel, Israel wasn't a nation yet. Not during that time. It is now the number they had before plus one. Israel is included. And they have they have their little agents in Israel working right now very hard to get things to go in their direction. And it's all being orchestrated. So those of you in the UK, don't lose your taste for things. Continue to pray, but be very sober. Be cautious of what you agree with. Don't openly agree to everything. We know that uh, uh, in a lot of places, they will force you to agree. Kind of like your families, right? Your, your Thanksgiving comes around. Easter comes around. You're with your families. Somebody has a discussion that you do not agree with. They look you right in the eye in the face and they say, isn't that right? And they drag you into the conversation wanting you to take a side. And internally, you don't take a side with anybody. You're totally against it. But they look you right in the eye to draw you in to take a side. That's a spirit that does that all the time. To draw people in to make them take a side. Many have taken a side. I would hope that no one would play on, on their uh, game board to take a step off the game board. But as families do it all the time to try and draw you in to make you take a side. It doesn't matter what side you're on. Because normally when somebody does that, the entire argument is against the principles that Christ has taught us. And forgiveness is never part of those conversations. Isn't it ironic? This is the world we live in.